Okay, good morning. Um, I've already explained to you that I'm recording this session, so don't let that put you off. I'm just going to behave quite normally and naturally. Uh, this is interviewing and advising SGS2. So last week we had a short session where um, uh, we were just looking really at the guide, but today is where you get a chance to put into practice what we've uh, been teaching you. So, uh, what are we going to cover this morning? Uh, we're going to have a, a look at you being able to identify the key issues in a client scenario and use these to plan and conduct the interview and your advice to the client. So what does that mean? If you're playing the client, uh, which some of you will be doing for the first part of the session, that'll give you some experience of, okay, right, this is the shape of how the client scenario is going to pan out and how that then fits in with when you're the solicitor giving advice. For you in the role of solicitor, you are going to be using the guide, following the guide to uh, get details of the client's initial, uh, well, the initial details introducing the interview, um, and then getting the clients uh, to provide a brief uh, explanation of why they're coming to see you, go through the overview, and obviously the overview is the most important part uh, of then uh, identifying the questions you're going to need to ask in tandem with having uh, prepared a legal note to then be able to advise your clients. So basically this whole SGS is uh, an opportunity for you to use everything you're given to uh, practice uh, because the next opportunity you'll have in terms of uh, actually doing this is the mock, although you will have other opportunities to practice. So, key thing is deciding which questions to ask in an interview by analysing legal note as well. And um, I'll go through all the other uh, resources that are available to you to help you prepare effectively for the actual mock and the assessment. And um, we'll just briefly at the beginning go over the guide again um, to identify what the key parts of the skill are and how they're going to be assessed. For the purposes of this morning, has everyone brought in their um, chapter? Have you got access to your chapter and the guide, the interviewing and advising guide? This, yeah, I've got a couple of um, laminate copies if you haven't, because it's really, really critical that you well, you shouldn't be relying on this. You should know it. So my advice and the advice uh, of, of the whole course is to. Uh, make sure that you are completely on top of uh, the guide so that really in the actual mock and the assessment you're just using this as an aid memoir. This is just a reminder to you of where you're going next in the interview. Because what you really need to be focusing in on is uh, what the client's telling you, extracting the relevant information from that and deciding what questions to ask and how you're going to advise them. I think that this is a really key test of being able to filter out all the unnecessary information and focus in on uh, you know, the key issues of the client. So what's the client's main objective? What have they told you about what the problems are and how you then go on to uh, ask some questions and then give them some advice. So in terms of how this morning is uh, going to pan out, um, I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. It's, it's not complicated, but you just need to clearly understand how it works. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to run over some of the... Um, no, I'm not going to do that. Yes, I am. Sorry, I am going to do that. Um, this is all being recorded. Excellent. Um, <laughs> that will have to be edited out. Uh, <laughs> um, right, yes, so we'll just run over the key parts of the skill. I hate being recorded. Um, uh, we'll, I'll tell you, uh, no, we'll go through role play A. So one of you will play the client, Robin Fletcher, and the other part of the pair will be the solicitor. That will be for the time limit of 20 minutes. I'll warn you after 15 minutes. I'll then give you an opportunity to just give each other some individual feedback, and then we'll feed back to the whole room. We'll have a chat about how that should all pan out. We'll then swap roles. So 
Uh, the person that played uh, the solicitor then plays a client. The other scenario is called Sam Chaucer. Um, and again, uh, we'll, you'll have a little bit of time to do some feedback individually, and then we'll talk about how we should have addressed the questions and advice. This morning, group one did pretty well, pretty well. No pressure. Uh, <laughs> they, they, uh, they seem to enjoy it as well, which is good. Uh, then we will uh, just, I'll give you an actual briefing. There's a document to hand out just setting out how the mock assessment works. Um, and then you can have an opportunity to ask any questions. Not many questions came up this morning. I think lots of people wanted to know the practicalities about when they needed to be at the places. So if anything crops up, obviously ask me. Um, and if you've got any questions about the actual assessment. Okay. So I just wanted to have um, a brief look again at the guide, uh, just so that you're aware of uh, the basic structure and the notional marks that are attributed. I think I've already said last week that if you look at the demonstration interview, uh, you can actually pretty much script what you're going to say in the introduction and the conclusion, so nice, easy marks. The only issue with uh, the introduction is you must remember to advise the client about the costs of that interview. You don't go into detailed information about the costs at that point. Um, you, and you remember to uh, recap your client's initial explanation of the problem. In the conclusion, just make sure that you remember to uh, advise the client about the costs, uh, the complaints handling, who uh, is going to see who you are and your status and who is going to supervise you, and make sure that you make clear that there is an action plan in place setting out what the different tasks are for each of you and the time frames. Okay, um, the key uh, marks in this skill are obviously questioning and advising, so that's uh, what we'll focus on in this session as well in terms of feedback and talking about how you can improve uh, questions you ask. In, the, in um, I mean, the key uh, issue to do with this skill is, in reality, you would never be expected to advise a client within such a short time frame. So the test is, can you absorb a lot of information in a short piece of space of time, filter out what you don't need, concentrate on what you do, pinpoint what questions you're going to ask, and then advise, all in a very short space of time. So it's not real you know that is not what would happen in, in practice but it's that is the test that we are setting you uh, so i hope you can sort of take on board that that is you know the whole purpose of it that the tight time frame is, is actually there for a reason and uh, helps develop your skills uh, right um, in terms of how you approach the questioning so you need to focus on the client's concerns. When do you hear about the client's concerns? In this terms of this, the way we structure the scenarios, when do you get to hear about the client's main concerns? At the end of the overview, they will always say, and my concerns are, or I've got three concerns. Well, no, they will always tell you. So don't interrupt too soon. If, you know, if if they don't start questioning, because they will have. If you haven't heard the concerns, they haven't finished the overview. Okay. Uh, so you then need to use the notes you've made during the overview. And what we suggested you do there in terms of um, helping you decide which questions to ask, identify the questions to ask. Split the page. Uh, so. Uh, you've got to be careful what you're writing down. As it, I think I said to you last time, we take the notes in at the end of the actual assessment. Some people have written hardly anything, and I'm thinking, what happened there? You know, I mean, but then some people have written everything, way too much. So there is a happy medium there somewhere, you know, identifying the key piece of information you need and then pinpointing. What questions you're going to need to ask. The difficulty is that as they don't tell you what the concerns are until the absolute end, you don't, you're not clear about what you know the critical pieces of that overview are. But you have to try and use your judgment, having uh, have a legal note in advance. So 
just, just try and do that. Um, in terms of how you're going to ask questions, this is a real finesse. This is quite a sophisticated thing that we're asking you to do in terms of trying to ask your questions in an appropriate, thorough and systematic way. I think some of the problems, some of the clients' problems, fit more nicely into little categories and then others don't. So, but what we're trying to avoid is a slightly scattergun kind of questioning, as if you haven't really thought it all through. So try and be quite logical if you can in questions and you know, keep your composure and your calm rather than sort of rabbit in the headlights. I know that there's something that that client's got that I need to have, you know, so uh, I'm sort of desperately hunting for it. So yeah, try and try and be uh, try and have some sort of structure there. Uh, as I said last time, don't try, uh, don't start to advise too early. Might be a good idea at the end of the question, as we've said before, uh, to give yourself a little bit of time, take a moment, say to the client, um, I just like to look at my notes or, um, so that um, I'm sure that I've, I've got everything down before I start to advise you. Or another way, which is recommended in the chapter about um, questioning, is that you recap and check that you've got some of the factual details correct. Gives you a bit of buying time, gives you a bit of time to think. Um, you're not going to be marked down in terms of your listening skills and presentation if you do that. That is part of the advice in the chapter, just to make sure that you're absolutely clear about what uh, the client wants advice on. Uh, in terms of the advice, uh, Yes, they want legal advice, but what's their objective? They're a person. They've got a business or uh, they, uh, they've got a, a problem, a legal problem in terms of a relationship or they need some advice in that context. So just be clear about what the objective is because you could, when you tell them what their legal position is, uh, you're giving them a sort of quite a sort of clinical uh, explanation of uh, what the law says. But then you need to, the skill is advising in context, what's their main objective? What do they want to happen? Um, what's going to be the best solution for their problem? So in terms of the structure, uh, what, I, what we said last week, don't forget to actually explain to the client what their legal rights are and apply the law to their problem. So first thing, explain their legal rights um, and then set out what you think are their options, explaining the advantages and disadvantages of each. That bit, the explaining the advantages and disadvantages, is hard, you're under time pressure, but if you just take a step back, deep breath, think about each option and what the benefits and the drawbacks are, uh, that, that would be very, very useful for the client to know, obviously. So do make sure that you at least attempt to do that. Uh, in terms of litigation, so what, you know, the client might have a very legitimate legal claim to pursue, but do they want to do that? Have they indicated to you that they don't want to get involved in costly or a time, you know, time consuming litigation? So that's a disadvantage which they've already identified. So think about things like that. So what do we do at the end of our advice? What do we do? We encourage them to make a decision. Uh, what don't we do? We don't tell them what to do. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully that uh, feeds in quite nicely to your action plan. In terms of the options, the scenarios that we're going to deal with today uh, aren't BLP scenarios. So if you do have a BLP scenario, uh, it might not fall into uh, the kind of triple... Uh, do come in that um, uh, you you know so do nothing negotiate or litigate you know we're trying to move away from that what you need to do in a BLP scenario might be um, considering what uh, different commercial options are um, you might want to focus in a bit more in more detail about um, negotiation, what type of negotiation, how are you going to do that? So that doesn't sound like a very sort of legal solution, but that's what the client needs to be given a steer about in, in practice. The other thing to say about BLP scenarios is 
even though you're not, you're only supposed to rely on the legal notes for your preparation, you're not expected to do any additional research, you are expected to have a working knowledge of your BLP course, the module. So you would be expected to extract information, not detailed information, not kind of assessment level information, but you would be expected to apply the knowledge that you have from BLP to the scenarios you're given. So do bear that in mind. Like, you know, what what percentage you'd need to pass an ordinary resolution for that kind of thing. Yeah, that level of detail. Uh, in terms of PLP scenarios which you might get, uh, there may be uh, op an option for uh, some sort of litigation or a process that the client needs to go through. Uh, the example given here, such as you know, making an application to the land registry if the dispute can't be resolved. So just to think about what kind of scenario you've got and what the most appropriate options are in that context. Everyone happy? Yeah, you look very happy. Good. Uh, right, uh, some advice to, for the role play. Uh, if you're playing the client, obviously this morning, that's the first time you're going to have seen the scenario, so uh, don't worry about just reading it out. That's absolutely fine, okay, uh, following the structure. When you get, you will, in advance of the mock assessment, get uh, the scenario, if you're, uh, a scenario and your legal note two weeks ahead of time which will be on the BLE, which you're expected to print out and bring with you to the assessment, okay? Where there will be um, an unannotated copy of the legal note available for the solicitors, you're not allowed to bring anything with notes on into the assessment, the mock or the real assessment. So by all means, prepare and use your legal note, but you can't bring your ones with notes into the assessment. If you bring a paper, you're going to already have like a table what table would that and be? Question notes then. Yeah. We'd have to put a long in there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's blank with the paper, sorry. Otherwise, it would just be too complicated for us to have to. Yeah, I know, no, it's good. It's a good thought, but no, just blank piece of paper. Um, right, in terms of clients, then, I'll stick to my clients. Only give additional information if it's specifically requested. Now, the scenario will itself say, do not give this unless it is asked for in this way. So it will all be clear to you. But uh, the, the skill is that the solicitor has to listen to the overview, hear what the client has identified as certain pieces of information, so that they're only going to be given them if they ask for that particular piece of information. Um, in terms of a document, if you're given a document, what do you do with it? Read it. Good. You read it, even though you are in full rabbit in headlights panic mode you do read it what don't you do with it which some students have done don't say eat it no one's done that yet <laughs> don't write on it because some students have written on documents in assessments and obviously that's potential well it's a professional conduct matter you know particularly if someone's will or conveyance so don't write on anything, okay? Um, and then while the solicitor is going, uh, the student solicitor is going through the process, do make some notes about feedback for them. If you're the solicitor, uh, you'll have prepared for this session using the legal notes. So if you could um, make sure you've got those to hand um, and ready for your questioning and advising. Do use the guide. So if you can all get out a copy of the guide, I've got a spare couple of copies if you haven't got it with you. Um, and take a good note of the client's account of uh, the during the overview section and what answers they give you. So do try and use the split page idea to make sure that you identify the right questions to ask. Everyone pretty clear about what they're doing. Okay, I will now turn off the recording. Thank you.